بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد نميمة وغيبة شر عظيم أيها المحبة أيها الأحبة that Namima backbiting and slandering, speaking ill about one another, these are extreme forms of evil. And incredibly important to not break your fast or take away some of the edger of your and reward of your fasting is to be careful about speaking about other people. To know when it's permissible and when it's not permissible. To know that the asal of that is that it's not permissible except under circum certain circumstances. For example, if a person is from Ahl Bida, a person of, uh, of innovation, innovating in the religion of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they present a danger in their creed, their aqidah, or what have you, or their blind followers of a particular sect or group. Then in other, those circumstances, it's permissible to speak about them, to warn others, to say so-and-so, you should be careful. You shouldn't attend his lectures. You shouldn't sit with that sister because they are from such and such group or because they, um, they, they present a danger in their aqidah. They believe that Allah is, uh, did not ascend above his throne or that Allah doesn't descend to the lowest heaven. They deny the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam. They deny those ayats where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Ar-Rahman rose over, over his throne. They disbelieve in that. So it's permissible to warn in proportion to their bid'ah. To warn people, you should be careful in taking knowledge from that person. Another circumstance is when it's permissible to speak about your, uh, your Muslim brother or sister or what have you is also in the sense of warning someone or advising someone during marriage. For example, a sister wants to get married and she doesn't know about the condition of a brother. She can inquire. And you, knowing the condition of the brother, that brother has been married 70 times. That brother is a major sinner. That brother has beats women. That brother does whatever. It's permissible to speak about his, his issues. So as so that the sister can be warned and vice versa. Maybe a uh, sister is unknown in a community or she is known in a community. And the, the brother asks about her. He, he's, he, he wants to know before he marries. And he asks about her. And they say, no, the sister has fallen off her religion several times. She even left Islam or whatever the case may be. She committed such and such act, which is a major sin in order to warn that person before they enter into that marriage bond. Those are permissible times when it's permissible to speak about others. But most of the time it's impermissible. And here's some of the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding that. Qala alayhi salatu wa salam in the hadith of Hudayfa, an Hudayfa ibn Yaman, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu maqal, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yudkhul al-jannata namam. Mutafqun alayhi. In this hadith of Bukhari and Muslim, that was narrated by Hudayfa ibn Yaman. He sallallahu rabbi wa sallam alayhi said, that the person who makes namima, meaning they carry tales in order to spread wickedness about people, you know, or they, they spread the statements of people. So and so said this, you know, and they, they say it in order to spread it even more, to spread wickedness. They're namam. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the person who is a namam, the person who spreads these wicked tales through their tongue, this namima, they will not enter paradise. And that's collected in Bukhari and Muslim. That's a stern warning for the person who does namima. billah. And in another hadith of the Prophet wasallam, he was walking by two graves. And he said, The Prophet wasallam, was walking by two graves. And in one narration, it said it was two uh, Jews. In the, they're, they're in the graves. And they were being tormented in the graves and no one knew. The Messenger of Allah knew from, from Allah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that, 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 that wahi, that revelation and that prophetic insight. That he knew, alayhi salatu wasalam, those two people were being punished in the grace. And they weren't being punished for something, they were being punished for something that the people take lightly. Then he said, as for one of them, he said they used to not clean themselves properly when they went to the restroom. Meaning that they didn't make a stinja properly or what have you and they let urine and najasa get on their clothes, on their abaya, on their pants, on their whatever. And then he وسلم, said, as for the second one, is they used to do namima. They used to carry the tails in order to spread wickedness. So be careful about speaking about other people. Letting us know that that's one of the punishments of the, one of the reasons for the punishments of the grave. Stay away from namima and those other things. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كفى بالمرء كذابا أن يحدث بكل ما سمع رواه مسلم. In this hadith, it's a Muslim. The Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه, who said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, it is sufficient, or yeah, it's enough of a lie. That a person, or it's sufficient that a, a person is as considered a lie to be considered a liar to spread uh, everything that they hear, letting us know. Watch the tongue. Be careful of lying, and be being marked up with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as a liar, written up with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as a liar, and be careful. Of spreading everything that you hear. Make tathabbat. If you hear something, I hear the brothers at this institute are doing this. I hear the sister does this. I hear brother so and so did this. Oh, these people are like this. But instead, keep silent. It's better, more often than not, it's better to keep silent. Especially if you don't know it's been authenticated or not. This is incredibly important because we have a sickness in the community where many people are trying to destroy the reputations of the people giving Tao, calling to Allah. And they do not know what's going on with those individuals, but they say, I heard this, and I think I heard this. Oh, doesn't so-and-so have such and such issue? And they don't even really know. Be cautious of that. Make tathabbat. This lets us know also to make tathabbat, to affirm what we say, it doesn't mean that if a person is making real mistakes and they're calling to a law, that people should not be aware of that. That's not what we're saying. Or that they have some bid'ah. We should, that should be alerted to the people. But if we don't really know, and we just heard from this person, who doesn't really know? And we just heard from that person, who doesn't really know? Or this, and speculations. Keep silent. Keep silent, refrain. Keep your tongue safe. And your religion safe. By not backbiting and getting into those uh, those sicknesses, those are just some of the characteristics and things regarding the tongue, regarding namima and ghiba, backbiting and, and slandering people, and spreading tales and so forth, and not making uh, being sure about what we hear. Those are some of the things that we have to be cautious about, and we have to be cautious about all the time but especially during the holy month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins and forgive us any time that we fall into those sins and help us to correct ourselves and be better. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.